So um, if you missed our PR 101 discussion in March, let's revisit the purpose of PR. Um, purpose, the goal of public relations is to promote, promote an organization and cultivate positive public sentiment. It helps you manage the spread of information among stakeholders. It goes beyond advertising and marketing to build trust with your target audiences. And it also connects newsrooms with sources. So the goal of PR is to ultimately generate positive media coverage. Think of it as storytelling. Whatever news or information you're sharing should be of interest to both the media and your stakeholders. And your stakeholders are the public, your customers, employees, investors, donors, and then also journalists in the media at large, um, and then et cetera. And basically anyone who is interested in your business and what you're doing would be a stakeholder. Um, PR helps those stakeholders answer questions about you, such as how does this business connect with its local community? What positive impact are they making in the world? Why should I spend my money or time with this organization? PR and specifically earned media show the real world impact that you're having. And um, so with NPR communications, there are three types of media. Owned media is fully controlled um, by you. So this is your social media. It is your blog content. It's your website. It's your marketing newsletters. Um, these are things that you put out um, for people to find. And then paid media, this is partially controlled. These are your, adverti uh, your advertisements. Um, either on TV and the newspaper, on social media. It's also your sponsored content. And then we have earned media. Um, this is what people most regularly associate with public relations. This is organic, authentic, and completely uncontrolled content. Um, it's free. And it's credible. It's the most credible form of media that you have because it's completely independent of what you are putting out. So, like we were saying, own media that is stuff that you put out in the world. Earned media, you're basically relying on someone else to help you get that in the news or share about you. Um, and so that's what makes it so trust trustworthy. Um, it also helps raise awareness about your organization. This coverage cannot be bought, which is again, why it's so valuable. It also directly contributes to brand sentiment. So it elevates a well-rounded uh, communication strategy. It also attracts stakeholders and contributes to brand growth. Um, so earned media can take many forms, but these are probably the most common. And we call these um, quote unquote placements, um, are also mentions. They can be found across print media, which is like your newspapers, your magazines, um, TV news, broadcast, which would be um, radio and podcast segments, um, and then also social media and online. You can find these type of earned media. So let's explore uh, what each of these mean. So word of mouth, um, that's people authentically sharing about you either online or off. Um, feature stories, that's in-depth coverage of your business, either newspapers, magazines, TV segments, anything that features you um, or your business and only you. Um, event coverage. This can be before, during, or after an event. So like, let's say you're having a volunteer event in the community. Sometimes reporters will play something about that um, in the newspaper before the event to invite people to come, or they can come during your event um, to showcase what you're doing, or sometimes they'll run a story afterwards to discuss the impact that you had. Um, influencer reviews. The, um, that you didn't pay for. Specifically, like this can include gift guides. So Father's Day is coming up. Anytime you see some type of story where it's like, these are the best gifts for Father's Day, those are influencer reviews. 
um, podcast interviews. Whenever you hear someone on a podcast um, and you ask yourself, you know, how did this person get on that podcast? That's earned media. Um, Op-eds in the newspapers or guest articles in magazines. A lot of times when you see those, um, those are earned media um, those are earned media placements that someone had to pitch to get put in there. Um, social media mentions by your customers. This also includes customer reviews or like Yelp reviews. Um, those are earned media when they're positive or negative. Um, and then expert interviews on trending topics. A lot of times people will say, well, you know, how does someone get on like CNN to be able to discuss this current event? Someone pitched that, and so that's earned media. Um, and then there, are, you know, are so many more um, types of earned media. And we will come back to this slide in a minute. Um, but before, but before we moved on, I wanted to see if you had any questions about what we've covered already. All right. Doesn't look like we have any questions. Okay. Um, so, and again, we'll come back and go over how these types of coverage, um, how you get these types of coverage next. So earning earned media. The big question is, how do you get this? Um, I always advise that my clients have a PR plan um, and I highly suggest creating one or a communications plan so that you can assess your business goals, your target audiences, and also identify where they are. Um, so for example, let's say you are a real estate firm selling luxury condos. Um, it might be more fruitful for you to get earned media if you target affluent magazines or lifestyle publications versus simply just trying to get on the local news. Um, then do your research to find these reporters and publications or media that align with your goals and audience. Um, so going back to this real estate um, example, you would search lifestyle publications and see which align with what you're doing and go through that magazine, really make sure that their coverage matches up with what you're doing, um, and then see who's writing stories that are similar to what your business is about. Record their name. Um, oftentimes their email address is right there in their bio. Um, record that information and just keep doing that. Um, as you can imagine, this is not an overnight process. Um, I have found that this takes me usually at a minimum around 20 hours. And this is when I'm creating a PR plan, um, the first thing that I will do so that you can really start to understand where your target audiences are. Um, because, you know, it's great to get just any, um, a lot of times the saying is, I think all PR is good PR. That's not necessarily true because it doesn't matter unless you're getting in front of the people who are going to end up, um, who are ultimately your stakeholders. Um, and this process is also, it's continuous, um, continuous outreach and relationship building. Um, again, it's not overnight. You're not going to send out one pitch and make it with that reporter. But if you continuously send them good news, then that's how relationships get built. Um, and so going back um, more on earning earned media. So you have your public relations plan, or maybe you are a very small business. You don't have a lot of staff. It's just you um, embarking on public relations. Um, Earn media isn't just about pitching. At a minimum, your business can focus on three high level strategies. Um, for starters, keep your customers happy. This is all about providing excellent customer service. Um, that is something that you can easily do on your side of the business and that leads to um, positive sentiment online. Um, invest in social media. Um, oftentimes clients or businesses, when they start out, they think that they have to be on every social media available. That's not the case. Pick one or two, um, and depending on your capabilities and your audience. So this goes back to that research you did when you built a public relations plan, right? So you know who your target audience is and where they hang out online. 
Maybe your customers are more on Instagram versus TikTok. Maybe they're, um, they can be found more on LinkedIn, depending on what you're doing. Invest in just those ones that are really going to help you um, reach your people where they are. And then um, create good content. Not everything needs to go viral, um, but good content is meant to just inform. And then have your employees share that content so it's actually getting out there. And then digging deeper, um, be thoughtful in your pitching. So if you are ready to go to the next stage and you know, um, like you have your PR plan, you've identified um, those media publications that um, really align with your business, be thoughtful. A lot of times um, businesses when they're starting out and they don't have a consultant with them, they'll just gather, you know, a hundred seemingly similar publications and blast out the same news to everybody. Um, that ultimately backfires a lot because then media start to realize that, you know, you aren't actually taking their time and their, um, and their, topics into consideration. But if you're thoughtful um, in what you were sending out and to who, um, then people really start to take notice. And then also make sure you are telling a specific story. Um, a lot of times businesses are doing a lot of great things, but when you are pitching, um, again, being thoughtful in your pitching, you want those media to focus on something specific. So um, let's say you have an event coming up that you really want to get covered. Focus on that specific event. Um, and then um, another useful tactic is to provide data. So if you have some good statistics on the people that you're helping or, um, or industry stats that are really relevant to your target audiences and to your um to the media that you're public uh, that you are pitching provide that data um for example i work with a veterans nonprofit that helps veterans um go back to school they have some really compelling stats um that 90 percent of the people that go through their program ultimately finish college versus just 75% of veterans who don't go through their program. Those that type of data gets people to take notice because they are able to see, okay, wow, you really are making an impact. Um, cultivate relationships. Like I was saying before, um, PR, it's really a consistent um, practice. You will pitch something out, and maybe you don't get a response, um, or maybe someone says no right now, not right now. Um, that doesn't mean stop reaching out to them. It just means that now is not a good time. And so just keep uh, reaching out with thoughtful, specific news. Um, and eventually you'll be able to make some headway. Um, be community, uh, be community minded. This is both online and on your social media, and then also in your local, um, your local area. So as we're saying in the high level, you know, invest in social media. But remember, you're not just um, putting up articles or making posts and then not engaging with the people that are responding to your post and your article. Have a conversation with people online. Um, and then also in your local community, um, what are you doing to help those in the area in which your business is, is based? Um, being community minded really elevates um, and gives you a better chance of getting some earned media. And then develop industry expertise. Um, this is like we were talking about uh, with the types of earned media, the expert interviews, um, things like that. If you are the go-to person in your industry um, that knows the most about the subject, or you know, you know a lot about something specific, develop that, hone that, and that can be something that you are offering to the media. Um, and the most important, I think I've said this several times already, be consistent, keep doing it. Um, all of this works together and it's a continuous process. Pick what is manageable to you and then just be consistent in what you're doing. Um, so let's revisit those examples from earlier, uh, the types of earned media. As I said, uh, consistency is key here. You don't have to do everything, especially without a PR firm of help. 
choose what's manageable, branch out from there. Um, so how can you go about earning these types of media? Um, let's break it down and uh, with what you just learned. So word of mouth, this connects with great customer service and engaging on social media. Um, feature stories. This is thoughtful pitching and specific storytelling. Event coverage, that's being community minded. Influencer reviews, again, that's being community minded and then also relationship building. Podcast interviews, um, that's thoughtful pitching. Op-eds or guest articles and magazines that is showcasing your industry expertise. Um, receiving social media mentions, that's being community-minded. Again, cultivating a relationship with your community online. And then expert interviews, um, that is industry expertise. And so hopefully this kind of gives you a little um, bit more background about how those um, earning earned media and how that connects with the types of earned, earned media that you can garner. Um, so I wanted to pause real quick for questions before we move on. Does anyone have any questions? If anyone has a question, you can use a hand reaction to raise a question or leave a comment in the chat and see we have a question from Dominique. Uh, let's see what she has to say. Good morning. Thank you for the opportunity to speak and ask a question. My question is, what if you were once heavily in the media eye and what you're about to do, what you are undertaking, it requires all of what you're talking about in terms of PR. However, you started to understand that you're more of a private person. Yes, there's the community. Yes, there's the online presence. What advice do you have for people who are just simply private? Um, the engagements online, it's not your forte. It's not best for you where you're at in your life, even though you need it. You, we all need people. We all want to be there for people. You do not want to be the type of person who just puts your content and your information out there for people to just grab and take and you, you take their money, you provide that service and then you're not available anymore, but you're just private. How, how, how do you suggest going about that? Um, I, that's actually a really good question. Thank you. Um, I think that there's a couple of things you could do if you recognize that you need PR um, and that you need to engage um, with people, particularly online. That's one of the things that you mentioned. I, um, I'm also a private person. That's why I work yeah. um, on the back end. I don't like to put myself out there either. Um, wow. I, think, I think like, let's say you um, need to share some things on LinkedIn, right? I think you can be thoughtful with how you, the cadence of what you're putting out. You don't have to be posting something every single day, especially if that drains you or makes you uncomfortable. Come up with a schedule that you're comfortable with. Um, and then if we're talking about some of these other things like having an actual interview um, or being in feature stories or what have you, depending on how big your business is or whether or not you work with other people, Perhaps it would be more fruitful to put out other, um, to put out those people that you work with um, who mm -hmm. are more comfortable doing that. So you make a um, decision that you don't want to do this. You're stepping back um, and let someone else share what you're doing. Um, or again, mm -hmm. you know, if that's something that you specifically have to be the one to do. Um, be uh thoughtful in what you're pitching and make sure that the opportunities you are pitching make you comfortable. Um, so again, you don't have to do everything. Just decide what's what your comfortability level is and what you are capable of doing um, and at which pace that you're capable of doing that. Um, yes, ma'am. Does that <laughs> help? You. Yes, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you. We have another question from John. Let's see what he has to say. Sure. 
Yes, hello. Hello. Hi, John. Yes, good afternoon. Uh, I'm very happy and I wish to thank you for the opportunity on this conference of the public relations and communications. I am, I'm sorry I'm a bit late to join you, but I, I can see that the topic is very interesting and very useful. Uh, so I would like to ask you to throw a little bit more light on uh, what is meant by end media and pitching, end media and pitching. Yeah, um, so just to make sure uh, I understand you. Oh, sorry. Yeah, for the benefit of those of us who are late. Yeah. For the benefit uh, of those of us who are yeah, so earned yeah. media is essentially any type of um, placements or mentions that you do not pay for. Um, it is what people most uh, commonly associate with public relations um, and it's coverage that cannot be bought and is completely independent of your organization. Um, and pitching is, how you are able to garner most of that, um, most of that coverage. So for example, um, looking at the screen, types of earned media, um, podcast interviews. We went over um, how a lot of times when you hear a guest on a podcast interview, um, someone had to make the podcast host aware of this person who would be a good person to have on their podcast. Um, that's right. pitching. Um, yeah. And then earned media is you actually being on that podcast interview. That is a placement for you. And you didn't buy that. Um, it's external to your organization. Um, and then it also helps build credibility of your business. Um, oh, and right. I know you said you were late. We'll uh, be able to send out the slides um, for this. That'll expand on that a little more. Does that help? Okay. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? All right, let's uh, keep going. So, yes, keep... how not to approach earned media? Um, so, at its core, public relations is self serving, right? Like, you need to have your business or yourself in the media because it advances some business goal that you have, which could simply be um, you know, cultivating po positive public sentiment and building brandness awareness. At its core, you it's a mutually beneficial thing, right? But um, it shouldn't come across as self-serving. Whatever you're pitching, this is not an ad you are asking the media or someone to cover you because it is um, inherently valuable to their audiences. So ask yourself before you're pitching, um, you know, yes, you need this media coverage, but ask yourself, why would a reporter cover your business or product? Um, remember, we talk about storytelling a lot. What is the story that you are sharing with that reporter? or that podcast host, or what story are you sh sharing with your audience online? Um, what value are you bringing to their readers, to their community, to your followers, to your um, and also their friends? You can have the greatest product or service, um, but, if you, but you have to connect those dots for them um, and figure out what story you're telling. So for an example, um, let's say you're a re real estate business and you need more clients to grow. That is your business objective. Um, you just completed a huge new build um, in the city and you think this should be in the news um, ultimately so that you can help sell that new build. Um, ask, what am I offering to the media? Um, a couple of examples of a story that you might be able to get from that is, you know, why is this project unique? Um, maybe you could offer advice on mitigating some of the problems that you encountered um, while building this uh, new construction. 
or maybe there's some interesting history behind the project that the local community or the media would be interested in learning about. Um, so using those examples, a path forward could be um, like, let's say you are, you decided to go with why this project is unique. Um, you could pitch relevant real estate reporters and publications on that. Um, if you're offering advice on mitigating the problems encountered um, while building this uh, new construction, that could be thought leadership and sharing your expertise. Um, and then, you know, if there's history behind the project that's really interesting, perhaps that would be really good for local and regional news coverage. And that goes back to being community minded. Um, all this ultimately comes back to what we were talking about earlier with putting together a PR plan and really getting to know not only your target audiences, but also, um, but also the media who cover the topics related to your industry. Um, it comes back to research and storytelling. And always remember that public relations is mutually beneficial. Again, you're not, this isn't an ad. Um, no one's gonna cover your news just because you need it to advance your goals. Um, you need to be offering something that is mutually beneficial to all of your stakeholders. Um, and so hopefully now you've got a better understanding of earned media and the role it plays in brand management. Um, my biggest piece of advice is to do your research and explore what's manageable. If you can only accom accommodate social media, then go in that direction and cultivate a loyal online community. Everything we've discussed today builds on each other. Um, so with that, I love to know what questions you all have. Uh, if you have a question, you can use the hand reaction uh, or leave a comment in the chat. So for now, let's wait to see. Oh, let's, uh, we have uh, two questions. So let's start with Cristiana. Hello. Hello, good afternoon. It's afternoon here in Nigeria. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello? All right, no problem. Um, it's afternoon here in Nigeria. Good afternoon, everyone. Well done, good job. Actually, I wanted you, I just came in, my network was actually interrupted. So I don't mind if you can try a little, a little light, or probably give me a little bit, a little bit in terms of the influence review. I didn't get any good information. I didn't get anything to jot down. That's all. That types of end uh, at least. Are I'm you sorry. With me? I'm sorry, Christiana, you broke up a um, little bit. Can you repeat your question? Hello? Hello? Can you hear Hi. me? Yeah, I can hear you now. I missed I, part of your question. Okay, please. I just need you to give me a little explanation and influence review. I'll let you. I have to take you back. Types of end and media. So you said an explanation on earned media? Yes. Yeah, um, and I believe uh, this presentation will be sent to everyone who, was, uh, who missed part of it. Earned media is uh, the practice of um, getting credible placements in the media um, through uh, targeted research and it, going back to my notes. Um, this is what people associate with public relations. It's organic, authentic, um, completely uncontrolled type of media placements. Um, can't be bought, um, which is why it's so valuable. And it includes things like podcast interviews, um, getting mentioned in the news, um, event coverage, things like, um, things like that. Okay. And then I think we have someone else who has a hand raised. 
And I also see questions in the chat as well. Hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so good evening. Um, good work. Thank you so far, Christine. Um, Chigos here from Lagos, Nigeria. Um, I thank you for the presentation so far. So um, I want to have something to say regarding um, PR, at least from my understanding of PR and um, from what you have said so far, PR purely exists in order to influence people, the public outside. Okay, so um, pardon me from this part of the world, I don't know, I'm trying to draw a line. I know it's a very thin one between lobbying, bribery, and PR. So I don't know whether you're going to get there eventually, or sometimes what is purported to be PR is hidden under the guise of um, corruption. And I know that lobbying is a very fine word used in describing it. But here in Nigeria, sorry to say, to get things done, either by the government or even a private organization, so to say, you need to do what we call some sort of sorting. That's the term we use for that but it's actually bribery. So at what point or what line distinguishes bribery, lobbying from PR? Thank you. Yeah, uh, that is a really interesting question. Um, and I don't know that I have a lot of experience with that particularly, but um, let's say that you, you know, you're, trying to do, you're trying to get in the media, you're trying to do a good job and also cultivate the relationships that you're building, build on the things that we've talked about. Um, maybe to, so that you aren't lobbying or having to engage in bribery, maybe there are other avenues that you should explore. Um, so example, looking at our list of types of earned media. Perhaps um, building a social online community so that you can reach your audiences directly and so that your information can be shared both online um, or even by word of mouth. Maybe that's a better um, tactic for you so you don't have to worry about um, engaging with, you know, a local media source and being expected to um, bribe them to cover your organization. Or perhaps there are um, some larger like podcast or news sources outside of Nigeria that um, your target audience uh, reads a lot. So you can still reach out to them independent of what's going on um, where you live. Um, but I think that that's what I would suggest is to explore those different types and maybe see what you can do independent of that. And it sounds like um, really um, cultivating your own community online might be um, might be a good tactic to explore there. Um, does that help? Yes, it does help a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Thank you. We have another question from Margaret. Let's see. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Christy, for your, your presentation. That was a very, very brilliant presentation. Though I joined very late, I was in another meeting, but I catch up three things we are trying to um, emphasize on pitching. I want to give an example that you, um, you throw light on. I'm from Sierra Leone. And for example, you're talking about pitching pitching and end media. For example, if you have a project, or for example, you have a different project that you, you want them to pitch and get the best out of those projects. Um, in Africa, some people pitch their project very well. And at the end of the day, when you go to oversee and to oversee their project or to monitor what they are pitching, you can't see exactly that they're throwing light to, to see the good things about what they are pitching into their project. So can you throw light on just example for what um, our, next, our last colleague was saying about, yes, about, um, about bribery, corruption, and also 
it's also involved in project management and also projects that are also pitching in getting audience or in selling it into the media. Can you please throw light onto, into what of those are the, some of the things we face in Africa about pitching? Thank you very much. Um, yeah, like I, uh, like I was saying um, with the person before, I um, don't know that I can speak to that specifically, um, but again, I would look at what you were able to do without having to pitch um, where those type of practices are engaged. So again, um, perhaps you can build your own community um, and do your own outreach within communities where that isn't a practice. Or, um, you know, if you have a project that you're trying to get covered, are there new sources outside of where you live um, that are a little more overreaching that don't engage in that? Um, but it sounds like possibly one of the best things to do would be, and that's one of the things that we were um, discussing during the presentation, is that you don't have to do everything. And at a minimum, when it comes to public relations um, and high level, you really should be um, investing in social and your online community um, and creating your own good content that leads to um, that leads to mentions and reviews and um, and positive sentiment that people who engage with you or um, customers of your authentically share on their own. And that still earns media. When people are talking good about you, leaving reviews and so that people who are searching to engage with your type of business um, can find you via the good things other people are already saying about you. Um, so that might be one of the better ways um, to go about receiving earned media independent of trying to bribe an organization to get a story in the news. Okay, I think uh, if anyone has a question, uh, we can read the questions that are in the chat. For example, I have one which is in Portuguese, but I'll translate. Um, from Nunes de Mozambique, um, he says, I would like to know in which moment communications can, can benefit a, a company. Yeah. Um... So communications is really, it's a core function of a business. Um, it would be, you'd be really hard pressed to find an organization that doesn't have some type of communications strategy, whether that be marketing, advertising, um, and or public relations. It is communications is how your um, customers ultimately um, find out about your company. Um, and it helps you get more business in the future. Um, if we're talking about PR specifically, um, public relations benefits a company in that it helps your stakeholders. And your stakeholders are you know, the public, your customers, um, your employees potential investors, donors, et cetera. It helps those people answer questions about you, um, such as how does this business connect with its local community? Um, why should I spend my money or time with this organization? It really helps kind of draw that line because you know a lot of times you can have like your own website, you can have your marketing newsletter, um, you can have all these things that you put out on your own, but public relations is other people authentically sharing about you, um, which is what makes it so valuable because people see things in the news and they're like, okay, that company actually is really doing some nice things. Maybe I will um, work with them in the future. Um, so it kind of helps, it helps people learn about you. Um, and so that's why it, that is why and how um, it's important for a business. If you have any of questions in your chat, you can read them and yeah. reply to them. 
Yeah, I saw one that was a really um, good question. Just a second. Um, so someone asked, how do I use um, guest articles? So guest articles are really interesting. And I found that those are used more often um, for like business to business type business um, type organizations. So for example, let's say you are a digital marketing company looking to bring on um, more clients or generate leads. Um, so as we were talking about in earning earned media, one of the ways that you do that is developing industry expertise. Um, and so to get a guest article, so a lot of times when you're reading a, let's say you're just reading a business publication and you see um, an article in there about how to, um, how to create ads on Google. A lot of times those are thought leaders who pitched that article to that magazine and that magazine picked it up. So what you would do there is, you know, find a relevant topic or something that you are an expert in. Um, you can write an article about that and pitch it to relevant magazines. This comes back to that research that you're going to do when you set out on this and finding magazines or uh, media that uh, align with your business and what you do. So you write an article on something you're knowledge about. You've got um, a publication that does a lot of um, work in that specific field of expertise. And then, you know, you reach out to them and you say, hey, I've got this article um, on this topic. I think this would be of really good value to your readers. Um, and then, you know, a lot of times if it uh, aligns well, they'll say, okay, yeah, we'll run this. So that's kind of how you um, do that. You, or let's go back to that last example that I gave of, um, let's say you're a real estate business and you just completed a new construction um, and you think this should be in the news. So what is this, what's one of the stories that you could tell there? Possibly you decide to offer advice on mitigating the problems encountered um, during that. Um, so you would write an article on what, you know, those problems and how you dealt with those problems. And then on your media list, you have relevant real estate publications and you would send that article to them. And that's how you get that placed. Um, and then I see a couple more raised hands and I'm, while I'm just finding um, the next question. Yes, we'll be able to share um, the PowerPoint presentation after this wraps. Um, yeah, and so Andrew asked, uh, can I elaborate on op-eds in newspapers? Um, so if you read through, um, I'm not sure if this works the same way for everyone, um, but in my experience, if you're reading through um, newspapers, like let's say even the New York Times, there is a section either in the physical newspaper or online um, that deals with opinion pieces. Um, these are usually a little long form um, between 500 and 700 words on a specific topic that you are advocating for. Um, so let's say you are a nonprofit and there's some um, really big in, uh, news coming out on the horizon, or there's some trending topic that deals with um, the people that you work with. You could put together an opinion piece on that topic um, and why that publication's readers um, should act on that. And so that would be an op-ed. And then um, you would send it a lot of times for op-ed specifically, there is a page on their website about how to submit those. Um, and you would send that in and, um, and go from there. So that's kind of what an op-ed is. It's you advocating for something specifically with a uh, newspaper's audiences. So again, that, that comes back to research um, and making sure that those on your list align with your audience um, and what you are, what you have to say. Um, and then someone also asked, um, 
Question is on the dig deeper section. Um, I said you could share data. Putting in mind the public sector operation, do we share data or information? Is there any risk on sharing data? Um, I think that depends on what kinds of data that you're sharing. Um, you don't want to set, you don't want to share anything that's confidential, of course, or anything that um, or anything that you're not comfortable sharing. The intent behind that bullet point is to share data or information, depending on what you have, that is beneficial to the public and also is of an uh, is of interest to your shareholders. Um, so one of the examples that I gave is a nonprofit that I work with that helps um, veterans go back to college and how they help 90% of the people that go through their program complete college versus 75% of the general public. That is helpful information that would be of interest to media. Or um, using the digital marketing example, again, maybe your company that, um, buys and sells Google ads and you just completed um, the holiday shopping season where you know there's a lot of activity around digital marketing. What type of, what were the numbers from that? You know, how much did you help your clients? Um, how much did your clients earn? What was their revenue during that period? Um, what, and why is that important for the general public? Because it shows, um, it's a snapshot of what the overall holiday shopping activity was. So that's the type of data that you wanna be sharing. You don't wanna share again, anything conf confidential or that you're not um, comfortable putting out there. And so if you, know, you do have data and you aren't comfortable with sharing that data, then don't put it out there. Um, find other ways to engage in public relations and, and earned media that you're comfortable with. Um, and then another really good question on an area of having a public relations uh, plan. To me, this is very important for public relations um, officer to have. Would you please share this plan um, if you have it? How is it prepared and how is it used? Um, so each public relations plan is going to be a little different depending on um, what your specific business goals are. Um, what I would suggest doing is searching, um, doing an online search for that. Literally type into Google or whatever search en engine you use, um, PR plan template. There are thousands of these online um, that can walk you through how to create one of those. It's really not um, putting together the plan itself, like creating the document really isn't um, all that hard. Again, where the re where the and hard part comes in is um, finding your target or identifying your target audience and where they are. Um, so again, you don't to, I can't answer that specifically per um, individual circumstances, but in general, you know, let's say you are a, um, let's say you're, I keep using the same examples, a real estate firm. Um, what do a search for what real estate publications exist and then go through those and identify which ones um, are relevant to your business. But to actually create the document, um, highly suggest just doing a search and so much information will show up um, for that. Um, and then I see a couple of raised hands. Um, Maurice, what's your question? Hi, Maurice, did you have a question? Mm 
Well, question, and we can answer it from Chris. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, yeah, uh, good, good, good morning. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity given to me to ask the question. And the presentation is really lovely and interesting. Can you please hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Yeah. Um, okay. So uh, my question is a personal uh, question. And I just want to ask, so uh, the way social media these days fetching a lot of money to the people, and uh, some of them, they, they posted all sorts of pictures, videos, and other things. Uh, to me, as the sister asked the first question that he doesn't want to show on the social media or how, which way can he go, that she go about uh, putting or making money on social media. In fact, it's something I, I always admire, but we don't know a way to go about it. Some of us, we can show ourselves on social media, but if there is any way, I really want to know, because I'm really interested in making money on social media. So, uh, is it communication? Uh, people are using communication and making money. A lot of channels and uh, please show us the way to make money on social media uh, by uh, adding, doing things underground or not on the uh, facing the screen. If there is a way out, thank you. Yeah, um, Chris, it's a very interesting question, and actually, um, social media is a whole different. Um, beast outside of public relations. Um, so in the context of what we were discussing today, um, I was really, I'm really focused on in PR when it comes to social with um, raising brand awareness, not necessarily um, selling on social. It is with where we're at today, it is really hard to um, have an online business on social media um, without investing some kind of budget behind it, um, just because ads are, that's the way that they've created this to be nowadays. Um, my high level advice would be to, um, is always go back to cultivating relationships online. If you don't have budget for social, then make sure that your, your online community, um, which would be like your followers and then your followers' friends are really strong um, because that is likely how your information is gonna get shared and how new people are going to find out about that. And then also um, if you have employees or you have your own social channels, um, share your own stuff, ask your employees to share your post, share your information with their followers so that you um, are reaching more people. Um, but again, in the context of what we're discussing today, that's really, we're focused on building awareness um, and public relations, getting reviews, um, those type of things, um, increasing positive sentiment. And it just, you know, the fact is it really is hard to, um, to make money on social without some type of budget. Um, behind it, but that might be a, a different class that um, you might want to watch out for. I really um, can't speak to that specifically. Okay, we have another question from Bill. Hello. Good afternoon from Ghana. Um, please, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. OK, thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, I was having uh, challenges with my network, so I missed a chunk of your presentation. I joined just when you were about ending. And um, I want to be sure of what I formed from your conclusions regarding what end media is. Is it about? um putting in so much work so that you end up getting attention for your um organization 
through multimedia channels? Is that what uh, end media is about? Yeah, um, join late. That's a great, great recap of what earned media is. It is um, just that, you know, being uh, engaged in your community and building, um, building thought leadership, et cetera, your expertise advice, so that eventually you are um, you are receiving mentions either online or however um, for your hard work. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I have a challenge. Um, I'm in charge of communication and public affairs at my organization, and I'm the only person in the department. And uh, to really earn attention in the media, a lot would have to go into it uh, using social media channels. And as a director, you have to be attending meetings here and there, you'll be on committees and all that. And sometimes I realize that when it comes to um, uh, publicity, I lack. And um, I'm believing there are lots of people in my shoes where you are employed to be in charge of communication, but you do not have the necessary workforce and even the tools. Sometimes even the organization doesn't understand the communication work. And so even if you submit a budget or you make requests, um, you don't get the needed um, support, but you still want to achieve. Is there any advice that you can give or directions that you can give to help people like me who are struggling? Yeah, um, you know, don't feel alone. That's actually very common in public relations and communications to be wearing uh, many hats, to be underfunded, um, and to be the only person um, doing what you're doing. Most of my, in my early career, I was the only person in the marketing shop doing marketing, PR, events, um, everything. My biggest advice, um, and you'll see this when you receive the presentation, my biggest advice is to choose what's manageable and focus your efforts. Um, so let's say like, let's, we're looking back at some of these um, earned media tactics. So like, you know, if you've got an event coming up or you're doing something important out in the community, focus on that specifically at that point in time. Um, and then if you aren't able to do that on a recurring basis, that's okay. Just make sure that when you have something happening that you are putting your effort into that um, at that point in time. Um, so that could be your event coverage and getting that um, pitched out to local news sources. Or, you know, maybe you can't accommodate that right now. So, you know, I keep saying it, cultivate your online um, relationships. And online doesn't even necessarily have to be social media. Maybe you have a marketing newsletter that you can put out, you know, every other week or once a month and focus on that being your communication channel. And then you can also, if you don't have time for media outreach, you could also um, include that, include local news or whoever you're um, interested media parties on in that marketing newsletter so that they're also getting your news directly. And maybe you could send a note and say, you know, here's what's going on or here's what, you know, I thought um, would be relevant to your business. So just be, um, be really thoughtful in what you choose to engage in um, and understand that you don't have to do everything. You literally can't do everything, um, especially as one person doing a lot of other things in the communications field. So figure out what you're comfortable with, um, what you're actually capable of handling and just go in that direction and then build out from there. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have two more questions. We can make these the last ones. Yeah. Uh, let's see what they have to say, Jean, Alex, Pierre. Oh. Right. Uh, I say good good morning, everyone, especially to you. Uh, as you say, I'm living in Haiti. I'm very blessed by uh, listening to you when you explain, when you touch two concepts 
they are very important. When you talk about uh, the relation, relation and communication, these concepts, we can, we can find them in the Bible, not only in the Bible, but the Raron, the Raron, the, the students. So my, uh, my question, I have two questions, short questions. How can you help me to get profit by using social media uh, for my business? How you can help me by using the social media for my you business? You had one other question too. What was your second yeah, question? Yeah, the other question is how you can help me to uh, to build or to create a website. Okay. Um, those two topics are, they are part of a communication strategy, but they're not public relations specifically. Um, PR is more of a, um, it's more of a long form and building brand awareness versus um, immediate sales and those type of things. Um, however, as I was discussing with the um, other person who had a similar question about social media, um, it's really, that is a whole nother um, topic altogether. If you are, if you don't have budget to put behind um, ads on social media, Again, I would really recommend creating a loyal, dedicated online community that will share your um, product for you with their followers and their people, and then also engage your employees to be doing that as well. Um, but it's really, really difficult these days to make money on social without putting some type of ads um, behind it. But um, one of the ways you could try to do that or start to do that is by enlisting, enlisting your um, people who already know and love you to um, be brand ambassadors of sorts. Um, and then also building a website is um, also that's a, a little different than public relations. That's kind of fine foundational to your business. Um, I would recommend, I mean, for my website, I use Squarespace, uh, which you literally just plug and play. Um, it's really easy to create one um, as just a person who doesn't have coding experience um, or just recommend just doing a search for how to create a website and lots of things like that um, will pop up. That said, if you don't have, um, you know, the time or, you know, energy or budget to create a website, just having a um, really good presence on social media can serve as um, can serve as your website. I see a lot of businesses now um, foregoing having an actual landing page, external website, and just using a Facebook page, and that is um, what they consider to be their kind of hub for information. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. 